we are taught evolution as a fact in schools. We're taught this throughout our adult life and from the many learning channels that we watch. Is evolution a fact? Evolution is not a fact and will never be a fact. It will always be a theory. And the reason it will always be a theory is because we don't have a time machine. We can't go back and actually see what happened. Most of the theory rides on this idea that there is variation within each species. We see that variation today and they claim that that's an extension of evolution. But we know microevolution is a reality. That is, changes within a species, we see that. But that's not evolution. We've bred the smallest dog, we've bred the biggest dog, but we've never made a dog turn into a horse. So evolution, as it stands right now, will always be a theory because we, ha we can't witness it. We've never witnessed it. Uh, that said, let me talk about some problems with the actual theory itself. The theory it rise, rests on this idea of random mutations and natural selection working on those random mutations. But science has taught us, biology, that anywhere from, depends on what study you look at, anywhere from 95% to 99% of mutations actually harm the species. That beneficial mutations are something that's very, very rare as we, that we have, it's been rare to witness beneficial mutation. So you got this whole theory riding on this idea of random mutations and we see they're very, very rare. In fact, if the theory is true and if um, natural selection is working on random mutations, it's more likely that species would go extinct, not uh, become more advanced. Flourish. Yeah, exactly. Now, that said, another problem with the idea of mutations is that when we do see a beneficial mutation and we've observed it, it dissipates over multiple breedings. So the theory is the foundation, very weak foundation. Let's look at the fossil record. This is where they claim to have the strongest evidence. Now, they tell us that uh, 550 million years ago, uh, according to the evolutionists, that the Cambrian explosion took place. What that is, is we see on the fossil record, we see going from single cell life to every body type that we have called phyla appear on the fossil record with no transitional form in between them. Then what the fossil record also shows is three mass extinctions. We see species and then we see three mass extinctions. We see new species, a mass extinction, and more species that we do not see what we would expect to find in an evolutionary paradigm, which is a gradual growth and sophistication of the animals. It's just not in the fossil record. It's so problematic that the new evolutionary paradigm is called punctuated equi equilibrium, which is that evolution happened very rapidly. In other words, it's evolution without the evolution. Now, one last problem I want to mention is transitional forms. When Darwin puts out his theory, he says, I know this is a weakness, but I can expect to find in the future, we can expect to find more transitional forms. That is, like any good theory, he made predictions. Now, we have found what scientists believe to be transitional form since the time of Darwin. Here's the problem. That is a percentage of all the species that we have found since then, we have less transitional forms today than even when Darwin existed. And if you use a strict definition of a transitional form, there's a partial limb, not a fully functioning limb, which is what we see mm -hmm. in the fossil record. We, we don't see these transitional forms. We see fully functioning limbs. But if you use a strict definition, some claim as little as 20 transitional forms. Some scientists claim as little as 20 transitional forms, while others claim as much as 2,000 transitional forms. With 3.5 million species having lived on planet Earth, we see that is still a major problem with the theory. The fossil record just doesn't support it. So it's a theory in crisis. And unfortunately, academics are holding on and clinging on for life, because if you're an atheist, that's all you got. You, you don't really have anything else to rest your atheism on than evolution. I mean, little green, gr little, little green Martians. There's, <laughs> there's, there's only two choices. There's supernatural or there's evolution. That's correct. Even little green Martians still have to have one of those choices. Long, uh, right. long ago and far away doesn't make right. it any less a problem. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that theory can't support. You know, the idea of design. We know that if something has purpose and it has complexity, there's always the existence of a designer. They cannot explain that. The, the theory cannot explain why we have so many features that wouldn't have otherwise led us to extinction. For example, eyebrows. I know that my eyebrows protect me from glare, but I, you can't make a case that if someone didn't have an eyebrow, he would have gone extinct. And like that, there's many features throughout, um, throughout the Earth that uh, evolution just cannot account for that. So I do believe it is a theory in crisis. And, um, you know, I was talking to an evolutionist one time and I said, well, I said, show me what is the strongest argument against evolution. And he said, well, 
I don't know any because there are no, no evidence and uh, no scientific findings against evolution. And I said to him, well, I got a stack of books eight feet tall at my house from some of the top scientists of the world that uh, have found many problems with evolution. Now, Eric, let me ask you this question. What, hap what is it when you're only fed one side of an argument and not the other side of an argument? Bias. Brainwashing. Oh. And that's what's going on in our schools today is brainwashing. And it's happening by academics. Unfortunately, there are a lot of honest scientists, but the academics just continue to cram it down our throat. Regardless of the actual science. Regardless of the actual science. Okay.